for many years I was so frustrated when I started painting because I knew my paintings could be better but I didn't know how to get there. I would watch YouTube videos with wonderful teachers and I never saw them make mistakes. Maybe they were so good that they didn't make mistakes anymore. Maybe they edited those out, but I needed some instruction on how to look at a painting and figure out what the heck is wrong and how do I fix it. If you'd like to come along with me on this painting journey for this painting of flower pots, I'd love to show you how I work through a number of problems, how I change the background, how I painted out some things that weren't working. You'll hear my thoughts about why this was, this looked good, this didn't look good, and I'll come up with some solutions for you on what you can do in your paintings when you run into that kind of problem. Hopefully it's going to give you some great tips. Stay tuned. I'm using a 24 by 36 inch canvas that was actually a landscape painting originally and I didn't like it so I painted over it with just a medium coral tone. And I knew that I wanted an uneven number of buckets. Uh, the only thing I knew for sure was that I wanted 10 buckets filled with flowers and I just with a pencil played with that. I ended up with three buckets pretty large. I'm using a mixture of my favorite gray, which is ultramarine, burnt umber, and white. And I mix that up in several different values. And to do these buckets, I'm just freehanding it. I used, just drew an oval and then some angled lines down on the side. It was so simple. And you know, for years, I would not have attempted something like that without tracing it or using a projector. But had I done that, this painting would have looked so tight and so fixed, and I really wanted it to be kind of loose and fun and impressionistic. And, you know, if you draw a line and it just looks too wonky, you can have a wet paper towel and wipe it off. But I found that because these pots were slightly uneven, to me that sort of added to the charm and made it look a little more painterly. So... Um, again, very easy to do. Just do an oval, do a couple of angled lines. You'll have a half of an oval at the bottom if the bottom shows. And then for the handles, I just drew a couple of big squares on there and uh, that was it. My light source is coming from the left, so I have the pot slightly darker on the right side. I'm using a one inch angled thin brush. It was just one that I picked up at a craft store. It's not a name brand, but I like those real thin chiseled edge angled brushes. They're great for doing lines and some things with some pre precision. Here you'll see me very loosely, very loosely and quickly putting in lines going around the top of the pot. I'm just not overthinking it. I'm not trying to get everything exact. I'm just trying to have fun with it and let it, let it just grow <laughs> with some uh, organic precision. How's that? So here I'm putting in my darker value. So I've got, if you can tell, I love this gray mixture because it's so easy to push it a little cooler or a little warmer. If you use a little more ultramarine, it goes cooler. If you use a little more burnt umber, it goes warmer. So obviously there I've got a little more ultramarine in the mix and it's just giving me a nice shadow. I don't think I used a slow dry medium uh, with my paint, but you certainly could on something this large where you're trying to get smooth transitions. I could also have switched over to a larger brush right there, but I think I continued with that angled brush just because I had gotten comfortable with it. You can always go back and dampen your brush a little bit and go in between those transition places and just soften that line. You can also take a mixture that's halfway in between that light and dark and place it in the middle and help get rid of that harsh transition. Here I'm just getting lighter and lighter as I move to the left to the light source.
here I'm just going over everything with the second coat. I'm smoothing those transition lines. I'm getting my darks a little bit darker, my lights a little bit lighter. Just getting everything with that final coat. That orange was still showing underneath a little bit. And while I didn't mind that peeking through with some areas with the flowers, I, I didn't like it with the can. So I, I won't bore you with going over all this, but just to show you, I did put a second coat and I did smooth out those transition lines. Here I'm adding some detail at the top of the can and I'm just following the line of that same curve. I'm not overthinking it. I'm using that same angled brush and it has a very chiseled end. It's very thin at the end, so you can get a, a pretty nice clean line. The, the main thing is to control the amount of pressure that you're putting on the brush so that the pressure stays the same. If you put more pressure or less, it makes the, the line wider or thinner. You know, if you really mess it up, you can wipe it off with a wet paper towel, but I don't mind at all that that line is a little bit uneven. I think it adds to that painterly look. Now I'm taking a sponge that I got just at a craft store and I'm dipping it into burnt sienna, that rust color, to create our rust. I'm also dipping it back into our original bucket color just so it's not too harsh. And I'm very lightly dabbing that on. My sponge is very slightly damp. It's not wet. I'm turning that sponge just to get some different looks. I'm applying different amounts of pressure. I want it to look splotchy and uneven. Things don't rust evenly. So I'm, I've never done this before. <laughs> this is this is the first time for me. So I'm just kind of playing with it, um, trying different amounts of pressure. Then I'm using one of my favorite brushes, which is a Rosemary and Company Classic Long Flat. And unlike our chiseled brush, the ends of this are very soft. Um, they're slightly, I would use the word splayed or ruffled. They're not real even and in, in, um, closely packed. They're a little more spread out. So, and I'm barely putting any pressure on this brush. And I'm using more my arm pulling things back and forth rather than my hand. I'm, I'm putting, I'm barely touching that canvas right now. Again, just trying to get things very uneven. So now I'm getting a little braver. I'm putting more of the burnt sienna, more concentrated with less of the gray on the sponge. And then I'm going back with my brush. And again, very, very light touch on this. I'm going to speed this up for you, but um, and I did this with all the buckets and I tried to make them I wanted it to look really organic. I wanted it to look a little splotchy where there were some areas of heavier rust than others. And I ended up at the end, I'll, I'll jump to that and show you, I dampened my brush and I went back in and I lightly scrubbed into that pot those areas just to I don't think I did it all over, but just to get some softer areas right there, you can see me lightly scrubbing that brush into the canvas, just trying to soften up those edges and get some real blurred, soft, realistic rust spots. I wanted to mention this is one of those decision points when I look back at this bucket and I thought, well, it doesn't really make sense that there's a blue <laughs> line running around the top. It doesn't look like rust. So I'm just going over that line with my burnt sienna again. And I think it made it look a lot more realistic. And now I'm just doing the same thing at the bottom, just following that curve. Don't overthink it. But it's amazing how that kind of little detail makes such a big difference in your painting. Don't forget the details. And speaking of details, here's a little simple detail that made such a big difference. And you can tell I messed up, so I'm just wiping it off. But I'm putting the seam that you would have on a metal bucket. And I find it easier to go from top to bottom when I'm doing a long line and just again try to keep an even amount of pressure. I'm using that same burnt sienna and then I'm going to go back with my lightest gray and I'm going to lay in a line right next to that original line and that will serve as the highlight and it's amazing when you put 
a light line and a dark line next to each other, the effect that that gives. There. So I wanted to share my thought process where I am with this painting and honestly I didn't put as much thought and planning into this painting as I would normally want to do. I knew that I wanted this to look like a farmer's market with flowers and buckets. I knew I wanted silver buckets. I knew I wanted an odd number. So because I made the buckets so large I ended up with three instead of five. But past that I don't really have a master plan here. I, I do want to have some sunflowers and so typically I would paint from back to front when things are going to be really layered but I've decided since I want the sunflowers to be in this predominant bucket I want them to be they're going to be really large because they're sunflowers I think I'm going to go ahead and put these in first and then worry about what's going to go in the other buckets after that I know I want a mix of things so um, I want to keep this painting really loose and I tend to be a super tight painter, so I'm going to continue with large brushes, large strokes. I'm not going to fuss with it. I'm going to try to put down strokes and leave them and keep this as loose as I can. Obviously, I'm going to have to put a shelf or something in for this bucket to be sitting on. But So that's going to be the next phase. I'm going to go ahead and get these sunflowers in. I might even, I might do the shelf next just so that gets put in. And then you're going to see me put in the sunflowers as loosely as I possibly can. In thinking about the color for these shelves, I was very purposefully wanting to keep good color harmony in this painting. So I'm reusing two colors that we already had, the burnt umber that was in the gray and the burnt sienna that was in the rust. And this was a problem that I had when I started painting that the, the color harmony was completely missing in my paintings. I didn't understand why. So if you can reuse some of the same colors in your paintings over and over, to those two colors, I added yellow oxide to give some uh, the feel of light on the left side of the shelves where the light source was. And then on the back end of the shelf behind the pots, I've added more of the uh, burnt umber to darken it up and give us a good strong shadow line. You can see here where I'm using the burnt umber, just I've dropped the line just an inch to give an edge to make it look like that's the front of a shelf and like it's in shadow. Super easy. Normally with sunflowers, I would put the faces of the sunflowers in first and then put the stems and the leaves. But in looking at this, I wanted, since I was ending in such a specific spot within that bucket, I thought it might be easier and work out better in the long run to go ahead and put those stems in to make sure everything landed where it was supposed to and then put the faces of the sunflowers on top of that. So that's what I did. As I was putting these stems in, I was very mindful to have them going at slightly different angles. I had some stems that were darker like they were in the background. I had a few that overlapped. I put some with a curve, just trying to make them look like they're not on a flat plane where they're like soldiers and everything's lined up perfectly, trying to keep it as organic and interesting as possible. Here I've added in a couple of super simple heart-shaped leaves, and now I'm taking a, a thick, heavy, round brush, and I'm just putting in those faces of the sunflower, I want some to overlap. I want it to be an interesting composition. You'll notice that one is more oval where the first one was more round. It's that angle, that disc shape that's going to help things look like they're turned away. And notice I put one behind the other. Again, we don't want them to look like they're on one plane lined up. They need to look like some are in front of the others and overlapping is the best way to do that. Here I'm just continuing to overlap. It's always good to have an uneven number. If, if the number of things that you're putting on your canvas are count, easily countable, having an uneven number will be more interesting than an even number. And we've talked about color harmony. It is so important. If you'll notice, I'm going back to two colors that we've already used in our tabletops. We've already used it in our clay pots or our uh, metal pots, I've got burnt umber, that darkest brown in the middle, and then I'm using the burnt sienna for that outside ring. 
and I'm doing this very quickly. This isn't sped up. I'm, I'm just dropping it in. I'm not overthinking it. I'm not trying to get precise lines. I want it to, to read loose. And if you take too long, if you're too slow with your strokes and you fuss with it and you try to get everything just right, you're going to lose that kind of loose, impromptu, painterly look. So I really encourage you just to have fun with it. See how quickly you can lay it in. One of the things I love about acrylic paints is I know if I mess it up, I can always paint over it. And I've just gotten real freedom in that area. It makes me a lot more willing to experiment with things, knowing that it's not the end of the earth. If I mess it up, I can always paint over it. To do these sunflower petals, I really recommend that you look at some reference photos and see how sunflower petals do. I'm using that same angled chiseled brush and I'm using Cad Yella and I'm varying the pressure I'm putting on that brush. So I'm getting some thin strokes, I'm getting some wider strokes and I'm, you'll notice I'm leaving uneven spaces in between the petals. Some petals will overlap, some you'll have a little gap, some you'll have a big gap. There, I'm really putting the full pressure on the whole face of the brush to get a more squared off look. And with sunflowers, you'll have some petals that stay to the outside rim, other petals that go inside into the, the face of the sunflower a little bit. Depending on how the sunflower is turned, some petals will look long, some will get very short. So I just you know, try to vary it, look at a reference photo, get a feel for it. Another thing that I think is, is very important in doing these is to vary your color. So I'm using Cad Yella. Um, later on, you'll see me using some Yella Oxide, which is what I used on the shelf to lighten the shelf. There's some color harmony again. I'll put uh, some white on the tips of these to show the ones that are most in sunlight and then you're going to see me drop some uh, pinks and corals in into the base of the stems just to um, give those some nice contrast so have fun with this try to do it again be intentional but try not to fuss with it try not to redo those strokes keep it organic and try to have some fun with it Here you're going to see me taking some of the cad yellow with a lot of white and just dropping that on that's pure white i think dropping that on to just a few tips that'll really give dimension to your flowers but don't put it on everything or you'll lose the effect but a little hit here and there really goes a long way Here I'm adding in more petals, more layers, and I'm varying the color. I'm using that yellow oxide again. I'm mixing it with the cad yellow. And here I'm um, touching up the centers again, putting another coat of that burnt umber, and then dropping a little bit of the burnt sienna just to where the sun would be hitting it, just to give it a slightly lighter bit of glow. You can clean up those edges if you need to. I decided it was time to drop in a little bit of background just to help my brain as I was looking at these light flowers. Um, I'm using just white with a little bit of a violet color. I don't even remember what that was. But here I'm using that angled brush again and it is great for this application where you're going in and cutting in around things. So I just wanted you to see what I was doing, particularly to get it around the sunflowers, just to help me see that a little bit better. Sometimes getting in a background can help you get a, a good perspective on where things really are.
This really helped me getting some background in. It's funny how that can really give life to the painting and everything makes a little more sense. And here I'm just connecting the stems to the sunflowers. I'm making sure that everything makes sense, that we don't have heads of flowers just floating in air. And I'm using some darker, some lighter, some overlaps. We don't, again, want everything in a straight line. I like having things go off the canvas. I like having some curves, some little unexpected shapes here and there. Here I'm adding in another really simple leaf, really simple uh, stalks. I'm using that same angled brush and I'm burying the greens. Um, if you use like ultramarine and cad yellow, you can just vary the amount of yellow and blue to get different greens, add a little white. I had several different greens on my palette and I ended up um, changing these greens a little later on. I'll talk to you about that. I thought they looked a little too dull, but just be mindful where the light is hitting. I love any surface on my painting, be it a flower or background or anything, a leaf. I'd like to have multiple layers of color, not just one flat color. It really gives your painting dimension. It'll make it a lot more interesting, more painterly. Notice I'm using really big loose strokes. I'm not doing anything precisely. I just encourage you, I'm adding a little more ultramarine there just to get that shadow a little bit darker. Just not dabbing, just trying to put down big strokes and keep it super loose. Adding a little yellow to make that look like it's in the sun more. You can see how regular these stalks are. They look almost childish, but I like that. I think that, again, if you want your painting to look loose, you've got to allow yourself the freedom to not go back and try to make things precise. It's those irregular lines that I think just give it a beautiful look. Here I'm just touching those leaves one more time, connecting them to the stems, making sure they're not uh, just floating out there. Lots of layers. Here's a step back to show you where we are. I like it. Now I'm just penciling in some flowers to go in that back bucket. And I just looked at photographs of bouquets. I went back and looked at some of my own paintings and flowers that I particularly liked. And then I just started sketching in an interesting composition. I wanted to have some leaves in there. I wanted to have some larger flowers, some smaller flowers. So very loose, just trying to get a, a loose roadmap of where I was going and to have an assortment of flowers. Now I'm blocking in the biggest flowers and I'm using a new favorite color, quinacrine and red. When mixed with pink, it just makes such a beautiful hot pink. I was just real excited. I'd ordered this was um, around a holiday and I had ordered a tube online and, and paid a, a little extra for the tube so I could have it for this painting. I was so glad it came in in time. So that's what you're seeing here. Now I'm just loosely putting in this foliage. I'm using a Princeton Poly Tip Catalyst brush. It's the same company that made the round brush that I used earlier with the sunflowers and it's very stiff and it holds a lot of paint and it doesn't collapse or get soft on you like a watercolor brush. It, it really gives a nice even stroke. So when I'm trying to paint something loose, I'm trying to put down a lot of paint and get it just a couple of strokes. This is a great type of brush to use for that. And I'm just varying the greens. I had several different greens on my palette when I started, some ready-made greens and some greens that I was just mixing with a little, little blue, little yellow, little yellow ochre, just varying them a little bit and um, trying to keep it interesting. When you have different plants, they're not going to be the same color. So it's important not to try to do everything in your painting in the same color. But you can, for color harmony, you can use one or two kind of mother colors and add colors to that 
and continue to keep color harmony even though you're varying the greens. I like when I'm drawing to, to draw the stem first so I can get the right angle and give a place for those leaves to attach. That really seems to help me. Now I'm using that same brush. I'm just using the edge and I'm just dotting in a little bitty piece of foliage that's hanging over the side of this bucket. Unfortunately, later on in the painting, I decided to put in paper wrappers around these flowers. So everything that I had painted that was hanging over the edge of the bucket had to be taken out and the bucket repaired. So, oh, well, that's just part of my process. You know, I just, particularly with this painting, I didn't have a photograph of everything that I was going to do. I was kind of having to make it up as I went along. But that was part of the fun of this, too. And I wasn't a slave to a photograph, and I think it helped keep this painting really loose and more spontaneous. But I did change a number of things as I went along as I saw that something wasn't working. And we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit, but know that that little fern frond is going to give its life pretty soon. Here's another one that's going to have to say goodbye, but isn't it cute? But that's a, that's a good, I left this in because I wanted you to see how I made that. You just draw your line and just touch either side of that and get a pretty curve to it. And it just makes such a simple little fern, super easy to do. Here I'm continuing to use that same little flat brush. It's amazing how many different types of flowers you can make with that brush. And of course, everything that's hanging over the edge of that bucket, I'm eventually going to have to take out and fix the bucket. But I'm just putting in some different little funny flowers, varying the colors. Again, just using that same little brush. I love these just little bitty petals like that where you just turn the brush just slightly and it really makes a difference in the angle of that flower. You can, you can see all these different types of little things you can get in just using either the face or the edge of a little square brush. And here I've picked up a painting that I did earlier of daffodils and I'm just using that as my reference just to get the right angle. I probably looked at a photograph to do that original painting. I think it's, it's very helpful, particularly something like daffodils where the leaves really look different depending on the angle. It I, I like having a reference. I just feel like that's setting myself up for success, just having something to go by. And again, I'm using this same little flat brush. I just, it's a nice little brush. And again, with daffodils, just like the other flowers in this, I like to have lots of layers of color, lots of layers. I'm putting that same uh, quinacridone red down at the, the base of that in the shadow. I'm using some cad yellow on top. Just lots of layers, getting it, getting it interesting, putting a little ruffled edge. Sorry, it's cut off a little bit at the top. Here's a close-up of that finished daffodil, and I'm starting another one on the left. And here's a picture of where I am. I'm just continuing to add flowers. I've added some eucalyptus rounder leaves in the back. So because I didn't have a photograph to go by that had all the elements, everything just the way I wanted it, I'm really kind of making this up as I go along. When you do that, <laughs> there's some freedom to that, but you can also run into some problems, and I'm running into some problems. I... This feels very haphazard to me. It doesn't look like what you would see at a flower market. So while I like having an assortment there, I think I'm going to put try putting some brown paper wrapper like you would see around bouquets. I've never done that before. So we'll see. I'm just going to try to not overthink it. I'm going to try to keep it loose. I'm going to make some craft paper. You Trying to use some of these same colors, it'll be much lighter, but I want to keep good color harmony. I'm going to try to put in some quick lines, paint that in. Like I say, I've never done that before. It may look terrible. I may have to redo it, but this is kind of part of my process. Um, I've decided down here, I think I'm going to do the same thing maybe with some peonies and hydrangea, but to put them within some paper wrappers just to kind of make it look a little more realistic. I do feel like this still looks too sparse, so I'm not sure if I'm going to add more sunflowers. I might add some other bouquets 
to the bottom of the bucket. That could even be a place where I could add some peony heads at the bottom of the bucket. So uh, this, this is my process. We'll just see how it goes. But again, I'm just being very purposeful. I want to keep this super loose. And the fact that I don't have a fine drawing already put in is kind of forcing me to keep it loose. So that may make you nervous. That may be feel too chaotic to you. It's, uh, you know, particularly filming this for you, it would be nice if everything was kind of planned out and I wasn't having to make up anything as I go along, but alas, I am. And so I'm going to let you see that process. I'm going to film putting in this paper. We'll just see. I might try penciling it in first just to get a feel for it. I'm going to try to put in some darker places, some lighter places, so it, you, it reads like there's some folds in the paper, and we'll just, we'll just wish for the best and see how it goes. Stay tuned. I penciled in a couple of lines, and here I'm using that same big angled brush that I started with, and I'm using raw umber as the, I'm sorry, raw sienna as the main color. It's just kind of a light khaki color. And as I'm using this, I'm going to be adding a little of the burnt umber, the burnt sienna, the yellow ochre, the same colors that are already in the flowers and in the wood shell. So I'm going to be using those same colors in that paper. It's a bit of a brain tease to put in that paper because some of the paper is going to go in front of the flower. Some of the pa paper will be seen behind the flower. So uh, I looked at online at some photographs with paper wrappers just to help my brain get, excuse the pun, wrapped around that a little bit. Um, so just kind of work through it. And of course, these flowers that are hanging over the edge of the bucket are going to have to be painted over and then I'm going to have to repair that bucket. You can tell I'm trying to preserve that one daffodil. I like that a lot. Since this painting is looking so confusing, I wanted to show you some photographs of more towards the finish with this so you kind of get a feel for where we're heading with this. I know it doesn't look anything like this at this point, but this is where we're going. Here I'm putting that in in the background. I, I had to wipe out part of it that I put in the background just wasn't reading correctly. Here I'm incorporating the burnt sienna, just trying to get some lights and darks. This ended up taking maybe three coats to get that full coverage. I'm putting darker in the back of the paper, trying to get it lighter where the light would be hitting, just trying to be mindful of my light source. And uh, It was a bit of a challenge just figuring out the puzzle of getting those angles right, getting it to read correctly. Here I'm going over it with the raw sienna, just trying to get a thicker coat, get, getting more coverage. But I can already tell, there's I'm dropping in that burnt umber to get it dark at the bottom, but I can already tell just getting those flowers contained is helping it a lot, keeping it from looking so haphazard. I would like to say that I just did this quickly and it was done, but I really finessed with this quite a bit, just never having done it before, trying to figure out how the folds should be, trying to get the just the angles to read correctly. So I wanted you to get a shot from the front and see what's happening here. So I've put in three paper wrappers. We wouldn't want to use two. So I've got a smaller one in the front. And you can see where I just, I've used raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little white. And I've just 
put a little dark line here and there and then put a little light line on top of it. I'll show you more closely when I work on the other bucket. But I think these are turning out very nicely, but I need to put some more flowers within those bouquets and fill like in there, fill that center space up so you're not seeing the background. That should be stems and flowers coming out. I've sacrificed the front of the pot. I'll have to take those flowers out that are going over that lip. I'll have to rework it, rework the handle, take that little fern out. So there's some things that I had to give up in order to do this, but overall I think the effect of that with the paper in it is so much better. I can see not having the paper with something like sunflowers, but these mixed bouquets, it just it didn't make sense that they weren't together. I'm not crazy about the background color with the paper, so that might be something we'll have to tweak. So I'm going to fill in more flowers in our bouquets. And when we get down to this bucket at the bottom, I think it would be a whole lot easier to put the paper wrappers in first and then fill in with flowers. So that's what I'm going to do. When I get to those wrappers, I'll try to get the camera close up and let you see from beginning to end how I do these paper wrappers, which was the very first time I've done them. And they were surprisingly easy. I had to get find a photograph of some wrappers looking at it head on. Most of them were looking down and it was just causing a little bit of a brain cramp trying to figure that out. So I think this is one of those times it would be helpful to have a photograph to go by. So let me work on filling in that bouquet and when I get down to this next one I'll let you see it a little more closely how I do the wrappers. I wanted to show you a few photographs of the progression of adding flowers to those bouquets and just trying to put in different types, filling in there at the bottom, using different colors. I like having a little white in there. I thought that popped pretty nicely. There's a little close up of one of my favorites. So that was a lot of fun. It's, that was kind of one of my favorite parts. Here I'm penciling in that wrapper first and because I wanted these buckets and what's happening with them to overlap and not feel like little three isolated pieces, I intentionally took the point of that wrapper in front of the shelf that's above the bucket and up through the bottom of the bucket on the top shelf. So I wanted them to have some overlap and some interest. I did find a photograph of a wrapper that had some curves to it. That's what I'm doing there. I'm just putting those folds in as I saw them. I don't think I would have attempted that without a picture, but just kind of trust the picture, draw the lines where you see it, and it's just one of those things that'll work out. This was definitely easier, putting the wrapper in first and then the flowers. If I ever do this again, I'll be sure and, and do it that way. Here I'm putting in the darks and the lights in the folds just as I see them. I'm not worried about does it look right, does it look like paper. I'm just putting in the shapes, the colors, and values as I'm seeing them in the photograph. And if you do that, it'll work. It just kind of magically comes together. I decided as I'm going back and tweaking, I'm switching over to one of these um, Rosemary & Company Classic Long Flats. This one has been quite used and loved and it's very rough on the end and I feel like I just need to get something a little softer. Um, I've added a little bit of yellow ochre to this just to kind of soften that up. Gosh, you still see that shelf showing through. It's just been a little stubborn. Big strokes, don't overthink it. Again, that little yellow ochre is a great way to let the viewer see that there's some light hitting it. I'm just looking at my reference photo. I'm just putting in light where I'm seeing it.
Maybe I got that too dark. Something just fell over in the studio. <laughs> hmm. Nothing that I see. Okay. All right, I think I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some flowers in and just see what we end up with. I think I'm going to fill in some gray there for the bucket. And let's just see what we've got. I wanted to share another decision point that I made. So we had that sort of pale lilac background in and I didn't like it next to the craft paper. It just wasn't doing it for me. So I had a brand new tube of Cad Yellow Light, which I'd never used before. I've used Cad Yellow, uh, I'm sorry, Cad Red Medium. But this was Cad Red Light. And when you mix it with white, it forms the most beautiful, peachy, rich color. The, the little round flower in the middle of that bucket is actually Cad Red Light without any white. But here I'm using it with a lot of white, thick paint, thick wide juicy strokes and I'm really liking it better. It's warmer. I like it better next to that craft paper and so I went ahead and did the whole background in that. I, I used more color on the left side of the canvas and as I got to the right side of the canvas I let it pale out a little bit but I'm very happy with the way this turned out and just wanted to share that with you. I also wanted to mention the background color of your painting can make a huge difference in whether your painting is successful or not. I'm going to put a link in the description box of a YouTube video that I did that was just about changing the background color of a painting and you'll see what a huge transformation and in that painting I went from a from a warm background to a cool background. And this one, I'm doing the opposite, but I'll kind of talk you through in more detail. And it was just fascinating, the difference that it made. So don't overlook your background. So I've lived with this painting over the weekend and I've made some executive decisions. And I wanna talk with you just for a minute about some things that are bothering me, some things I think are working, but things that I think could be much better. One thing that's concerning me is the, the color between the shelf and the craft paper in the background is so similar. I feel like that craft paper is not jumping off and I'd like that to be something that's featured. I've considered making the shelves white, like an antique painted white, but I don't want the shelves to jump out. I like the fact that they're brown and look really natural and I like how they are with the rust. So in order to fix this, I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to going to do is darken the background. I'm going to add some charcoal black into that background space. I'm not going to do all of it black and I'm going to keep it very mottled, but I'm going to see if I can't, by adding some black to that, that should make that craft paper jump forward. And I'm also going to lighten that craft paper. Another problem that I'm seeing with this paper is the folds should go up and down like this where over here it looks like it's crinkling that way, which is not correct. So I'm going to take these folds out and just kind of start over and then have a few shaded areas going vertically. I think that's going to read a lot better. I'm going to add a few more of the eucalyptus leaves up here in the top, maybe add a few more tiny flowers, but overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this area is looking. I think the sunflowers are looking washed out against that background. I'm going to make them a little larger. I'm going to add a little more color um, up in this area just to make these pop a little bit. And I've decided, you know, I wanted to keep that shadowing back and all that. I've gotten over that. <laughs> I'm going to put hydrangea uh, maybe coming up to here that are going to fill in the bottom front part of that bucket. And so I feel real good about that. On these peonies, I'm going to develop those, put the greenery around them, and then in the left side, I'm going to put something tall that kind of goes up and maybe in front of that bucket a little bit. So we've got some height on both sides. So that's what I'm getting ready to do next. I may not narrate all of it, but just wanted to explain what I'm doing. I'm also going to put a little highlight on the handles of these buckets, maybe a little bit 
around the edge because these are old rusted buckets i don't want them to look too shiny i don't want to over highlight i want to keep it kind of soft and rustic looking but those are the things that i think will improve this and solve some problems so we'll see Here you see me adding some charcoal black to that background. And again, I didn't paint it solid. I let some of that burnt sienna show through. I left it just kind of sketchy and I varied my strokes. I varied the amount of pressure I was putting on the brush. And gosh, that looks so much better now. That paper is really jumping forward. You see the shelves. That was just a big improvement. So when you've got things that are too close in value, you can darken some things, lighten other things to fix it. So while I thought I wanted those peonies, the more I lived with those, I ended up actually putting the greenery around it. I, I don't have a picture of that, but I just didn't like it. I just couldn't get happy with it. So I painted over it. And one of the biggest lessons I hope you will get from this video is if there's an area of your painting that's not working, that just doesn't look as high quality as the rest of the painting, go ahead and paint it out. Be fearless about that. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a painting that section's always going to draw your eye. You're never going to be happy with it. I ended up putting some daffodils down in that bottom of the painting. It just made such a difference. I love that part of the painting. Now I love the whole painting. So if it isn't working, fix it. All right, now I'm going to put in some little white flowers. Since I have a little white at the top, I think it would be nice to repeat it. And the flowers are going to have to fit inside this little tuck of paper. So everything's going to have to come inside this little space. For me, if I'm doing a tall something, it's easier for me to do the, stalk, the stem. And then I have my height and the, the curve of it. And I know kind of then where to put flowers in. So I'm going to start out with a little liner brush. And I'm just going to dip it in some medium sort of olive green. Uh, I'm going to take my little olive green and mix a little ultramarine blue in there. Maybe just a little touch of red to gray it down. That's too dark. <laughs> I'm going to add a little yellow ochre to it. Just trying to get something kind of dark but sort of natural looking. I'm going to get it fairly wet since I'm using a liner. I'm going to be positioned here with the paper towel in case this goes awry. And I'm deciding, sometimes it's easier for me to start at the top and pull it down, but usually you want the thicker line at the bottom. I am going to have this go in front of the bucket, so let me just try one from the bottom and we'll just see what happens. Okay, so when you do a really long stroke, you might have to go back over it, but that's okay. So I like the fact that there's a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm just going to keep adding some of these staying inside this little bitty space. I, feel like, I always feel like you need a little bit of a drum roll, <laughs> something like this. And I'm going to try not to have them equally spaced like little soldiers. They need to overlap. Like this one, I'm going to start almost in the same spot. And I ran out of paint. That's, th that's a problem with liners. They, are, they don't hold much paint. But you can get a nice thin line with them. Again, wetting my brush again. They shouldn't all be exactly the same height. Just try to get back, vary them. It does need to look like a bouquet. I'm going to try one going top to bottom. That feels a little better to me. I'm just <laughs> holding my breath. I'm, I think I like things going off the canvas, so I might have one going completely off. 
you know, if you mess it up, just but again, because we're trying to keep this kind of loose, if the lines aren't perfect, that's fine. I mean, that's kind of, that's pretty crooked, but I, I'm okay with that. I think the faster you can do these, the better they look. That may be enough. Um, there are also going to be some leaves in there and flowers, so I think I'm going to stop with that. I'm going to go over a couple of these where the, my paint just got so thin. Ooh, it takes a steady hand. You can hold your arm. Because this painting is so large, I'm having to stand up to do this. I can't really prop my hand on anything. And a lot of this stem is going to be covered up with flowers, but it does help to have a decent road map. Since we didn't have a big road map when we started this painting, but isn't it turning out well? I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I think it's interesting and different. It's, it's certainly different than anything I've done before. If you can, when you're doing something like this, to have something go in back or in front, it really, again, you want things to look three-dimensional. You don't want it to look like everything's on a flat plane. So I pressed down harder right there, and that made that line wider. So the more you can keep the pressure the same, the more even your lines are going to look. Clean that up a little bit right there. Okay. I think I'm going to let that dry or get, get a hair dryer out and then um, we'll apply some flowers and the leaves. Yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, I'm going to put in these little flowers. I'm going to show you a picture of a little bitty painting I did years ago. And it's got some little white flowers. They're sort of like little miniature foxgloves. I just kind of made them up, but that's what I'm going to put on these stalks. I'm going to use this Princeton Polytip Catalyst Size 6 Round Brush. This is a real stiff brush that's great for acrylic so that it's not going to bend when I, when I put that down. It's kind of keep that round shape. And I'm going to start just using white with the tiniest touch of light blue violet. This is a great shadow color that I use a lot with flowers. I use it for clouds. I use it for a lot of things. And this is a heavy body. And so, and it's um, opaque. So I'm hoping that I, we can get good coverage through that between the, the white and the, the light blue violet. So I'm going to, you know, I don't, I'm going to try it over here first on the pink. If I mess up over here, it's going to be harder. If I decide I don't like this and I want to go back and redo it, it's going to be more difficult to, to start over with this bucket and get it to look right. So I'm going to start over here. If I mess this up or change my mind, I can always um, just paint over that. So... I'm going to start out doing something really small here at the top. I'm going to keep it loose. I'm not going to overthink it. Try not to overthink it. So I'm using white with just the tiniest touch of that light blue violet. It's just keeping it from looking stark white. And I'm just moving down the line. I want to vary these a little bit. I want to do some that are in front of the stalk, some that are behind, some that are a little more clustered. This isn't letting me get something perfectly round. It's it's uh they're a little little wonky, but we like wonky, right?
So I changed my technique a little bit. I'm going to let you see. Instead of doing my brush in a circle, and instead of mixing it with the blue, I'm just going into pure white and I'm putting, I'm just putting a mark. I'm not doing a circle. I'm just laying down a single mark and it looks a lot more organic. I, I'm liking that so much more. So rather than it being so perfectly round, and I like having the pure white, and then I'll go back in with the blue. So uh, yeah, I'm liking that much better. Want you to see. I decided to add a little greenery to the bottom of this. I'm taking a, a little um, angled brush. It's a size six. I'm going back into my green, and I'm just starting down in here. I'm putting some pressure on it. And as I come up, now I'm putting a lot of pressure and forming a leave, and then I'm picking back up. And I'm letting it come up in front of these. Make sure I've got enough paint. You know, when your paint starts getting thin, it just doesn't have much coverage to it. So let me get a little more paint on my brush. I'm mainly going to keep these in the back, but... Um, I'm going to do one right in front. Might put something back in there, back in here. I'm going to go in front of that. I'm going to darken these stems up that are back in the bottom. Again, trying to get kind of a variety, little crossing here and there. Stick another leaf back, back in there. Well, that doesn't look right that it went in front of that one. Let me see if I can wipe that off. I don't like ever having something just one color. I think it's just kind of boring. So I've, I've put a little more yellow ochre back on my brush. I'm going to go back over this same leaf and just touch it again. It's amazing what a difference that'll make, just keeping something from looking so flat. Just a little leaf in here in the back, here and there. Just put it down, put some pressure on it. That makes it wide, and then when you pick it up, it just I'll do a little more right in here. Okay. To do the hydrangea, I used that same stiff round brush and I dipped in ultramarine blue and just kind of figured out the placement of those heads. I made sure that, that some were overlapping so it looked like some were in front, some were behind. I used ultramarine blue and ultramarine blue with white to block those in and it took a couple of coats. But I like having a darker color underneath before I start applying the petals. You'll notice at this point I'm using a filbert brush. I load it with a lot of paint and I just put down those little petals. I make sure to get an interesting edge on the outside of that circle. You don't want it looking like a round ball. It needs to be a little more oval or a little more wonky. On that bottom one, I added a little bit of the violet that was used originally. So I brought the painting upstairs last night and put it in my den and just lived with it for a while. That really helps me to get away from it a little bit and then look at it again and see what my initial reaction is. I am really pleased with a lot that's happening. I, I love this whole scene. I am going to add a little more eucalyptus. 
Um, I love the daffodils. I added the slightest bit, tiny touch of orange, cad orange, to the white and to the yellow. And it just has given this a lovely glow. I like this a lot. I like that you see the paper wrapper, but I think the bouquet looks too sparse. So I'm going to add a few flowers in. I added a little red here. I might add just another little tiny something. The one thing I'm disappointed in are the hydrangea. They look squatty to me like they're just treading water on the edge of that bucket. I wish I'd made them taller. I wish there had been an opportunity for stems and leaves. I've considered painting them out and starting over. I just, I think this far along in the painting, I don't feel like I've quite got it in me to do that. So, um, I've considered adding a few taller ones with the stems, and I could still do that. But I think I really like the paper um, with these other buckets, and I think I'm going to add some paper around this one bouquet, see if that does it. If it doesn't, I can always, um, you know, I might even do a bouquet around this group and let this be separate, maybe do a taller one, I don't know. But I'm going to try adding in some paper there tweaking that just a little bit, adding a few flowers. And I think we're actually getting to the end of this painting. I'm super pleased with it. I hope you're still hanging in there with me. I know this has been um, a long video and I know it's, it's real different than when you have a photograph and a road map and you know exactly where you're going. But I think this is a great video to learn from because it's, it'll help you look at things, see what's working, what isn't working, when it's time to paint over like I'm so glad I painted over those peonies I just love the way this is looking and if I hadn't painted over that I would have never been really satisfied with that so I'm a big believer and if it's not working just start over but I think this is working enough and I could add some paper maybe we can get that to work as well here we are with the finished painting with all its tweaks and start overs. I'm so glad I painted out those peonies and put those little daffodils in I think that's just lovely. I love adding in a couple of more flowers. I think that helped a lot. Here we have the brown paper wrapper around the hydrangea. And I added two more sunflower heads right above the hydrangea. That took care of that space I was worried about. Here is that beautiful back bouquet. I added in a few more eucalyptus leaves and yeah, I just love it. I hope this has been a fun instructional video for you and I hope you're feeling really encouraged that you can start something from scratch. Hey, if you'd like to check out more about me, please visit my website at victoriahagemanart.com. I've got all kinds of interesting things there, including some very reasonably priced short tutorials and longer courses. 25% of my painting sales goes to Hydrating Humanity to fund water wells. Thanks for watching. God bless.